Very interesting video, I would say, because we don't know a lot about dinosaurs in Georgia, and it's become a mystery for paleontologists for years. And I've been interested in basically the paleontology of the southeastern part of the United States, specifically in the Cretaceous geology and paleontology here. And so we have a lot of interesting fossils, including dinosaurs. Now, when you think dinosaur, you think of something like Tyrannosaurus rex or Velociraptor. You think of something like uh, the Mahel Creek Formation in Montana or the Morrison Formation in Wyoming and Utah that contains dinosaurs like Allosaurus and Stegosaurus. Well, we have nothing of the sorts like here in Georgia. All the fossils that are found here in Georgia are fragmentary. We don't have any complete skeletons or any complete uh, any complete skeletons belonging to dinosaurs. All we have are their fragmentary, fragmentary remains. And that's fine, you know, fragmentary remains, they give us a clue of what was here, but they don't give us the entire picture of, of what was here during the later part of the Cretaceous period. And so we have dinosaur fossils, thankfully, but we just don't have the fossils of complete dinosaurs like you would see in Montana and Utah. The geology is much different as well. You've got um, the Cretaceous geology in Montana, Wyoming, is very much um, is very much different in the southern in the southeastern part of the United States. All the Cretaceous fossils here are found in lag deposits, which means they're found in somewhere like riverbeds and gravel beds and things of that nature. Um, the dinosaurs found in in the um, southwestern part of the United States in the western part of the United States are complete, um, are usually complete and well preserved dinosaur fossils. Around seventy five million years ago, North America was cut into a large Western, uh, a large seaway known as the Western Interior Seaway. And this was probably the largest seaway in Earth's history. Um, the fossils that are found in the, um, made up of two, um, North America was, was cut into a seaway and you have um, two different land masses. You have Laramidia to, I believe the West and you have Appalachia to the East. And these were two um, isolated continents that um, dinosaurs were able to roam around. And the dinosaurs here in Georgia are not exactly well preserved as the dinosaurs there in, say, uh, Montana and Utah and Wyoming and those places, such as Canada. Um, the dinosaurs are fragmentary, like I said, and uh, we have dinosaurs here. Unfortunately, they're not as well preserved, um, but we do have dinosaurs. We have dinosaurs containing from um, Dromaeosaurs, um, Ornithomimids, and I believe Tyrannosaurus material. Um, we have something known as Apalachiosaurus, um, which is a Tyrannosaur was, descri was described by Dr. Thomas Williamson, Dr. Thomas Carr, and Dr. David Schwimmer in 2005. And this was a Tyrannosaur that was found in Alabama and it's known from juvenile specimens. And it's known from a relatively um, complete skull. We do have skull material belonging to Apalachiosaurus montgomerianensis. It was first, des first described in the Demopolis chalk formation found in Alabama and where, where, where the species name comes from, Montgomery, Alabama. And this is a large tyrannosauroid. Um, tyrannosauroids are basal groups of tyrannosaurs, which means they're close to the tyrannosaur family, but they're less evolved than, say, something like Tyrannosaurus rex. Tyrannosauroids are a little bit more young, uh, a little bit older in, in age. And we do have, uh, so yes, we do have Appalachiosaurus material. We have teeth, and we also have a couple of other bones, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but we also have hadrosaur material as, hell, as well. Um, hadrosaur is duck-billed material, um, duck-billed dinosaurs, um, like your Edmontosaurus that is found in the western part of the United States, like Wyoming and Montana. Um, but you also have uh, a, this, this dinosaur called Lephorothonotopus. And this dinosaur was discovered in the Moorville Chalk Formation um, in Alabama, but we also have their fossils here. I have a list of specimen numbers showing, the, um, showing how much material we have from hadrosaurs in other dinosaurs of Georgia. And so um, the CCK, um, this particular abbreviation stands for Cretaceous Research Collections of Columbus, Georgia. And the fossils, the dinosaur fossils found in Georgia reside in, in, in the um, collections at Columbus State University. And so the hadrosaur material we have is CCK-79-3-1. And this particular um, specimen number belongs to partial bacteria posterior left of the uh, dentary, which is the lower jaw, um, CCK-85-2-1 um, belongs to a distal third of a um, left metacarpal, um, number three of the metacarpal, CCK-88-16-1 is the posterior caudal vertebra, this is the tail vertebra, um, CCK-90-17-1 
It's the posterior caudal vertebra. Again, um, this is the tail vertebra. And then you have CCK-90-4-1. And this is the dentary tooth crown from a partial root. So we actually have a tooth crown or tooth belonging to a hydrosaur, probably Lephorothonotopus, which again, it was first described in the Morville Chalk Formation, but in the 1970s, its fossils started to, be, started to be uncovered here in Georgia. And the reason why we have dinosaur fossils in Georgia is because of the boat and float hypothesis. This suggests that dinosaurs, um, like I said, Georgia was underwater most of the Cretaceous period, around 75 to around 82 million years ago during the Campanian and Santonian stage up the latest part of the Cretaceous. Now, because of this, dinosaurs, of course, were not able to swim. So how did their fossils get here? Well, like I will discuss, the boat and float hypothesis may be an accurate description. Basically how this occurred are dead dinosaur carcasses were floating off, were floating ashore. And as this happened, their, um, their stomach started to be infilled with gas air, with um, their gas in their, in, in their stomach cavity. Because of this, this made the dinosaurs buoyant and they floated off the sea. In fact, we have scavenging sharks called squally corax. Um, we have their teeth bitten inside of hadrosaur or, or from a juvenile hadrosaur specimen. This specimen is V993.1.2.2. And this is a, um, I believe this is a metatarsal bone from a juvenile hadrosaurus. And inside of that, uh, in, inside of that metatarsal is a tooth from a squally corax shark. And so it's embedded inside of this hadrosaur metatarsal. And so this is how we know that during these, when the specimens started to float, known as the boat and float hypothesis, when these specimens started to float ashore, sharks started scavenging on their dead bodies. And so we have that direct evidence of shark teeth or squally corax, I should say. We actually have the direct evidence of shark teeth bite, bite marks and their teeth embedded side of some of the dinosaur bones. So that is a really good hypothesis to show how the dinosaurs were able to were able to be preserved in some of the sediments we have here today. So dinosaur fossils are known from the Blufftown Formation. This blood, um, the Blufftown Formation is a late Cretaceous deposit, and I should say it is a lag deposit, a marine deposit that um, has dinosaur fossils in there. So it's Cretaceous sediments, Cretaceous marine sediments that has hadrosaurs and other dinosaur remains. Um, hadrosaurs being probably the most common, but we do have theropod material as I suggested that we ha do have Appalachiosaurus material as well. And this is found in Stewart County of, the, uh, of uh, Columbus, Georgia. And the fossils are found um, in the sediments. And the closest thing that I have from the Blufftown Formation is this. This is Exogyra ponderosa. This is a Cretaceous oyster that is very dominant in Stewart County, Georgia. And this is from the Blufftown Formation. This is around 76, 75 million years old from the Campanian stage of the late Cretaceous. And so you usually will find a lot of these shells everywhere. They're just in piles and you have buckets of them that can be collected. And so a lot of paleontologists and fossil hunters have found oysters like these. Um, not only do we have um, um, oysters like Exogyra and um, Ponderosa, but we do also have um, um, turtles and we have crocodiles and mosasaurs and I believe a few plesiosaur remains as well. We do have evidence of plesiosaur teeth and we have evidence of different kinds of bones, just fragmentary bones scattered in the marine sediments. But once, once in a while, you will find um, Cretaceous dinosaur material. And so um, we discussed hadrosaur material. We have no other, ha uh, no other dinosaur material besides hadrosaurs and a few theropods. So we don't have ankylosaur remains. That material remains um, somewhere in Alabama, which is right next to us. Um, but we do have theropod remains, like I said, from um, Appalachiosaurus. And in 2010, there was a Appalachiosaurus. There have been two Appalachiosaurus teeth that are known. In 2010, found in the um, Blufftown Formation, the Crusader Sand, we do have a complete, um, a, a, a more complete uh, uh, Appalachiosaurus Montgomeryensis tooth found in the Blufftown Formation. And this tooth was discovered in 2010 by Bill Montante, and that specimen is on display at the Telus Science Museum in, um, in uh, Cartersville, Georgia. And so we do have Appalachiosaurus teeth and also some other remains. Um, like I said, we do have had um, uh, Tyrannosauroid material, such as Appalachiosaurus. And um, CCK-90-12 um, um, contains, and, oh, and also CCK-85-1-2, uh, contains phalangeal 
um, fragment bone shaft. So these are basically um, parts of the um, phalanges of the uh, of the foot. And we have those, and, the, and those are bone shafts. They're fragmentary. Um, like I said, we don't have much of the, much material belonging from these um, belonging from uh, dinosaurs found in the um, Bluffton and, and Bluffton formation. But we do have fragmentary remains, and these are just some of the remains that we do have of this particular theropod dinosaur. And so, yeah, we only have uh, phalangeal fragment bone shafts. Um, one specimen, I believe, is on display at the Fernbank Science uh, Fernbank Museum of Natural History. In Decatur, Georgia, that specimen resides in the um, a, as a display piece. So I have seen some Appalachia soil material on display at the museum. Um, and we also do have this is really interesting. We also have raptors. So go figure. We have raptor dinosaurs. So think about Velociraptor. Think about something that's a lot a little bit smaller. Um, not the Velociraptor you see in Jurassic Park. That's very inaccurate. But think about raptor remains. We do have raptor remains um, in Mississippi area in the Utah Formation. We do have raptor teeth. But the only raptor remains we do have belong to CCK-90-12-1 and CCK-90-12-2 and then CCK-93-12-3. And these are all distal um, to by a tarsal remains. These are all basically joints that, that are between the tibia and the, uh, and the tarsus. So these are... Um, to biotarsal remains from raptor dinosaurs. So we do have dromaeosaurs here. So that's really cool. Um, we don't have the, you know, the famous killing claw from Velociraptor. We don't have anything like that. But we do have these kinds of uh, bones, these small fragmentary remains. And so the dinosaur fossils are really, are, are really interesting here. We, like I said, we don't have a lot of fossils or we don't have a lot of dinosaur fossils. But we do have some. Um, the largest dinosaur fossil is a hadrosaur tibia that was recovered from the Bluffton Formation. And I don't exactly remember the date in which it was when, in which it was found, but I was able to look at a picture based upon um, Dr. David Schrimmer, um, he's a paleontologist from Columbus State University. He recently did a lecture in February for the uh, Paleontological Association of Georgia. I was there, and um, he talked about some of the dinosaurs and comparing the Georgia dinosaurs to the dinosaurs found in North Carolina and other places of the United States, and also some in Canada. And so we so. So it's interesting, I get the question sometimes, how do we know these belong to these particular groups of dinosaurs? And how can we pin down the groups of dinosaurs or the group that these bones belong to? Well, paleontologists can compare the bones that we have here, the fragmentary remains that we have here to the fossils that are found in North Carolina and other places of the southeastern part of the United States. And also in Canada, we can do a little bit of interesting, um, in interesting research of comparing the bones that we have here in Georgia to the fossils that are are more well preserved in Canada and other places such as Montana that have complete dinosaurs of these groups. So that is basically the reason how we know these bones belong to these particular groups of dinosaurs because we can compare and contrast what bones belong to what group of dinosaur. And so I thought that was really interesting to understand parts of comparing and contrasting these groups of dinosaurs based upon their fragmentary remains. And so we do have also we have ornithomimids. So um, think about, you know, the dinosaurs running in Jurassic Park um, in this open field. Um, think about those. Um, Tim um, also said they were, oh, gallimimus. Well, we have something similar to gallimimus. We have ornithomimic material. And a lot of ornithom, not a lot of ornithomimic material has been discovered in Georgia. We only have one bone. We only have one fossil. And this specimen is CCK-85-1-1. And this is a proximal right tibia shaft. So all we have is one bone, and this is a tibia shaft. So not exciting as you would think of as a, a as you know not exact not exactly exciting to uh, to that of an, uh, a fossil hunter. But you know we do know that these animals lived here. But we only all we do have are the fragmentary remains of their fossils, and that's all really all we have. So we only have one. Um, specimen of an ornithomimosaur, but we do have hadrosaurs and we have tyrannosauroids, which is really cool. Um, like I said, the, the most dinosaur material we have here are hadrosaur remains, um, but we also have other fossils. We have sharks, we have different kinds of fish. I believe we have lungfish, um, but we also have crocodile-like remains or alligator -like, alligatoroid remains. Um, we have uh, Dinosuchus rugosus, and the first Dinosuchus remains are found in North Carolina, I believe, in the Bladen, Bladen, North Carolina, I believe. And um, we also have Dinosuchus remains as well. This, I may have shown you this tooth 
in some in one of my lectures talking about Dinosuchus. This is the largest tooth described in the southeastern part of the United States, and this tooth belongs to no other than Dinosuchus rugosus. Um, Dinosuchus can uh, be around at least maybe around 23 to, uh, to around 35 feet in length. So this was no animal to play with. This is a large um, alligatoroid creatures that lived during the Cretaceous period. And this is probably the apex predator in Georgia around 75 million years ago. So this tooth is the largest tooth described in the southeast of the United States, and it's known from the Bluffton Formation here in Columbus, Georgia. Um, this, was, this was described and found in 2016 by Bill Montante, and the tooth is quite large. It's around probably three inches in length. Um, this is a really large tooth. Um, other material has been found, such as skull material, um, from Dinosuchus, and so it's really interesting to know that these animals lived here 75 to around 80 million years ago, and it's really cool to understand a lot of these fossils and to understand that dinosaurs were here. You know, like I said in the beginning, when you think of paleontology here in the southeastern United States. This is Paleo 101, and I'll see you later with another video.